Support for Carolina Business Review provided by Grant Thornton. Operating in more than 100 countries, our tax, audit, and advisory professionals specialize in helping companies unlock their growth potential. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of South Carolina, where healthcare is changing for the better. Find out how at ahealthysc.tv. And by Sonoco, a global manufacturer of consumer and industrial packaging products and provider of packaging services with more than 300 operations in 35 countries. Well, we find ourselves in the first part of the first quarter of a new year, and in fact, the fifth longest economic expansion in at least the last century. Welcome again to the most widely watched source of Carolina business and public policy for 25 years now. I'm Chris William, and it's fair to ask, given the empirical evidence, how far off is the beginning of a slowdown? And how deep would that next contraction be? Well, odds are, and it's comforting to think, that it will most likely not be like the last one, the Great Recession of 08 and 09. As we do each week, though, we will discuss those issues that matter most to our region. And later on, Bojangles Commander-in-Chief Biscuit Maker, Clifton Rutledge. Major funding also by Novant Health, bringing you world-class technology, clinicians, and care when and where you need it. The Duke Endowment, a private foundation enriching communities in the Carolinas through higher education, health care, rural churches, and children's services. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina, who's responsible for rising health care costs? Join us and many others in a candid discussion at letstalkcost.com. On this edition of Carolina Business Review, Peter Gwaltney, President and CEO of the North Carolina Bankers Association. Joanne Turnquist, President and CEO of Central Carolina Community Foundation. And special guest, Clifton Rutledge, CEO of Bojangles. Here's Chris William. Hello, welcome to our program. Happy New Year. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, we were talking before the program, which is always the case. Peter, welcome. Joanne, good to have you both here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, so, Peter, you know, here we got, uh, you're a banker. You're a recovering banker and, <laughs> and in, some, in some ways. So the Fed has raised interest rates now. You know, we talked about it ad nauseum, and they actually did it. It was a ho-hum event. Um, folks say uh, that it's not the interest rate increase, but the rate at which they do make the interest rate r increases over the next 12 to 18 months. What do you think about that? Do you think this is going to be punitive or, is, again, is this going to be a ho-hum for the next 12 to 18 months and are we making more than we really need to about this? G great question. I, I don't think we're making more out of it than it should be. It is mostly symbolic. Uh, we went for so long uh, with declining interest mm -hmm. rates and then at zero. Uh, and, and it was time for rates to increase. It's not so much that all the indicators were saying we need to put the brakes on the economy and raise interest rates. It was time for interest rates to go up. And so uh, all of the talk about it created the expectation, and so it, it was mm -hmm. time. And I think what we'll see in the coming year is three to four increases. Uh, of a quarter of a point. Of a quarter of a point each time. And so I think we'll find ourselves uh, a full percentage point higher this time next year than we are today. And, l l and let me ask you, you said it's, it was time to raise interest rates. Was it time to raise interest rates because they haven't been raised or was there something in the economy that you saw that said, you know, this economy is pretty good and, and, and how do you feel about the economy? Well, the economy is good. Uh, the jobless rate is, is declining uh, and so uh, we're almost at full employment now. Uh, and so um, uh, with innovation, productivity gains, um, the economy is just at a place where uh, I had mm -hmm. dinner with Jeffrey Lacker uh, from the Federal Reserve just uh, a couple nights ago, and he was saying that, that all the indicators are there that say it's time for interest mm -hmm. rates to increase and a slow, steady increasing of rates. Joanne, your CV includes corporate exec for many years, couple decades actually plus and now uh, chief executive of, of community foundation in South Carolina so certainly in 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 the nonprofit world when you when you kind of reflect on what Peter just talked about what do you think about the economy from from the tea leaves that you look at I started my job in 2009 and the attitude of giving today versus back in 2009 
is 360 degrees. It has totally gone full circle from people being, oh my goodness, I have no funds to give away, to today, I feel good, I have appreciated stock, the economy is more robust, mm -hmm. I feel more confident about my job, and people are giving, people are investing mm -hmm. in their communities. Is that strictly because of how people feel about the economy or is there something that's changed in, in philanthropy? I think both. I think part of it is that there is a confidence in the economy which drives people to feel comfortable in giving away their wealth. And with philanthropy, when you take a look at the younger generations, they are much more engaged in wanting to have a part in the community. They want to be a part of a growing community. They feel comfortable about the place that they live, and when they do, they're much more prone to invest in that community. Yeah, I, I want to come back to the softer science of that in just a second. Before we do that, uh, Peter, you uh, recently, in the last couple of weeks, had your 2016 economic forecast, which is a, a pretty big deal in the state, certainly in the triangle. Was there, were there concerns that came out of that? Concerns about the, the new normal. Our, we will have a, a, uh, a good year. We're uh, projecting growth, but it'll be less than what people mm -hmm. think of in terms of an expansion, about 2%. Okay, all right. Uh, Joanne, same, same question. Do uh, you think that there is a new normal? A lot of economists will use that term, mm -hmm. and they say the new normal is not 3% growth, but 2% growth. But as a philanthropic executive, again, you look at that and say, yeah, well, the challenge is going to be raising money for those things that we, that we serve. The new normal is indeed the new normal. So what it means for nonprofits that are fundraising is that they need to be more creative in telling their story more compellingly. They have to cite reasons why they should be an investment for folks as folks are taking a look at diminishing returns on their investments. As a community foundation, we work with individuals and families and corporations who invest their charitable giving dollars with us. So we also take a look at that diminishing return to ensure that we are not over investing in the community, yeah. but looking at in perpetuity so that we are reserving funds while doing good. Yeah. Uh, I asked you about what their concerns were at the economic forecast, uh, economic forum in, in the triangle, and you had it at the Sheraton, I know, uh, which is a pretty traditional place. But what were they encouraged about? What did you hear that m maybe surprised you a little bit, Peter? Well, just that we, we are expecting growth. Uh, there, there's a lot going on, too. Job growth? Did they talk about job yes, growth? Yes, job growth is good. Um, again, our unemployment rate uh, it was uh, one of the highest in yeah. the country at one time, and now it's one of the lowest in the countries. And so that's something to be very excited about. We have businesses expanding into the state. The General Assembly, has uh, they, they passed the job development growth uh, program uh, and now we have the uh, the highway uh, I mean the uh, the transportation uh, bond proposal uh, so we're looking at connecting the state investing in schools investing in education uh, investing in our infrastructure uh, and yeah. providing uh, incentives for businesses to come to North Carolina while decreasing income taxes and, and other things that, that make us look like a state that people want to come to. You know, uh, to celebrate. Uh, Peter, if you don't mind me saying, you came from Louisiana, Louisiana Bankers Association, yes. was a banker in Louisiana, and you come to North Carolina fairly fresh. Uh, many folks overtly talk about the politics of the General Assembly in North Carolina and how it's been prohibitive. We're not a pro-Republican, pro-Democrat dialogue here. Do you yes. think uh, you think that's overblown to some degree because it doesn't seem to phase you about the politics in the General Assembly. You seem to be looking past that. Yes, um, I thought I knew rough and tumble politics when I was in Louisiana, <laughs> yeah. and we have a reputation in Louisiana. And then coming here, uh, as I was researching and doing my preparation to take this position, I, I saw that we had a Republican governor, a Republican Senate, and a Rep Republican House and it seems that they don't get along. You would think, one would think that the party in control right. could get things done, and so that surprised me. We at the North Carolina Bankers Associations, uh, we're very ecumenical. We don't pay attention to party, but I did have expectations that proved to be false. Yeah. 
So it, it's just been very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting to say the least. Uh, we're going to give you the last word before we bring our guest on, Joanne. Uh, uh, the Community Foundation is the steward of Governor Haley's uh, uh, One South Carolina Flood Relief Fund. Uh, you are managing those funds yes. for flood relief in South Carolina. How's that going? It's going well. And to the question that you asked earlier, the changes in philanthropy, one of the reasons that it is is that corporations over the last six and seven mm -hmm. years have really stepped up, filling in the void where individuals might have fallen through because of the economy. So companies and individuals are really stepping up to support those in need. It's going to be a long haul. We've talked to folks in other states that have gone through these types of massive floods. Mm -hmm. And while we would all hope that that partnership between government, private partnership in funding relief would help us get through it really quickly, everyone has told us, you know, stay tuned. This is going to be a two to three year project. So we have to stay diligent in keeping folks aware of need. We need to be diligent mm -hmm. in ensuring that dollars continue to come in and we need to steward them well so that our state can rebuild. In, in about 20 seconds, is, is the perception of the depth of devastation different than what we think who don't live in the Midlands? The devastation is really deep. Two weeks ago. Surprisingly deep? Surprisingly deep. Two weeks ago, which would be December, we still had communities where they were getting out of their homes by boat, and their homes mm -hmm. had not yet been mucked out. When you look at a high rate of poverty to begin with, mm -hmm. and then you layer on a flood, there's going to be a lot of work and a lot of time needed in order to get people back to where they were, let alone get them back to where we want them to be. Yeah, God bless you for doing that job. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you both. Uh, stay with us. Our guest coming on in just a second. Next week on this program, uh, it's hard to go to a, a, it's certainly a resort in the Carolinas, but other places as well where you do not see a Tanger factory outlet. They are becoming ubiquitous when it comes to shopping, certainly in resorts, but also uh, large urban environments. Stephen Tanger, the CEO of Tanger Factory Outlets, will be on our program. And then in a few weeks, David Jones from Peak 10, technology company Peak 10, will be here also racking up some pretty uh, amazing corporate growth. In corporate board governance circles, the most critical job a board can and should do is hire the right CEO. That is simply job one. It's simple, but it's not always easy. Following the steps of a hand-picked predecessor, and now in his second year, the not-so-new chief executive, Clifton Rutledge, brings many years of managing similar retail chains through challenging and changing times with stints at Bonanza Steakhouse, Whataburger, TCBY. He is he the guy to grow Bojangles beyond 635 stores with better financial performance. Joining us now is Bojangles chief executive officer, Clifton Rutledge. Clifton, welcome to the program. Well, thanks for being here. Glad to be here. Uh, Clifton, is that the measure for you, is to grow the number of stores and have better financial performance? Is that the bogey that you look at every day? <laughs> well, I mean, in, in business, of course, you've got, to make, you've got to make a profit, no doubt about it. But, you know, that is not the overriding. Uh, that's part of our goals and our plans that we set, as far as our strategic plans to, to, to grow, but grow it in the right way. Uh, and what I mean by that is, is don't put dots on a map. You're not going to see us jump states. Uh, we'll grow in our adjacent markets, but we'll grow that in, in a right way. And of course, you want them to be profitable, uh, but it's so much more than that. I mean, I heard you talking about you know the community involvement. That is a big part of of our culture uh, at Bojangles, of being a part of those communities that we go in, as well as our employees. Um, I'm blessed that I get to uh, once a month, my best day of the month, is to go and speak to all our newly promoted assistant union directors, and I get to speak to all of them as they come into Bojangles. Bojangles University and you know from if they want to grow their career they can't be with a better company mm -hmm. because of us growing 50 to 60 stores a year that opportunity you have to have the right people to be able to do that so yes the financials are a metric but it is is only one of the metrics and again the the uh, enhancing people's lives to grow in their careers as I've been so blessed to be able to do uh, from a bus boy to here mm -hmm. uh, but then, you know, the giving back to the community side of it, I think, is a, a big, big part of, of our company. And uh, it's, it's, it's deep-seated from that aspect of it. The flood that we talked about, that you were just talking about, 
uh, that we were able to, with the Red Cross, pretty quickly mm -hmm. uh, set up to where our customers could donate and gave over $100,000 in a very short amount of time. Uh, being able to do things like that uh, is what means uh, more at the end of the day. Yeah, you, let me do a quick follow-up question. You said you meet with the newly uh, promoted assistant managers and, and managers, employees. How do you how do you empower them to not be afraid to tell the emperor that he doesn't have any clothes on? You know, it's it's interesting from that aspect because I actually say that. I mean, at uh, growing up in this industry, this is my 37th year. It's all I've ever done. And um, just because of my title doesn't mean I know everything. And uh, the w most of the, of the ideas that come, uh, whether it's in the operation side or just from a product side, typically comes from the field. It doesn't come from an office inside the, the, the corporate headquarters. And so allowing them to be able to speak freely. And uh, all it is when I go over there, they've got a list of questions that they have mm -hmm. asked or written down through the course of that week. And that may take an hour and a half or up to three hours. I stay as long as the, they, stay, they keep asking questions. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm blessed to be able to do that because as I've grown up, not many CEOs would do that. Uh, you know, you put yourself out there, you, be, you better be willing to take yeah. the, the, the bullets when they come. But that's, that only makes you better by doing that. Mm -hmm. Peter? Interesting. Uh, uh, some of the publications I've seen mm -hmm. um, list your company as one of the top franchise uh, companies in the country. What do you look for in a, in a franchisee or someone looking at getting involved in your company? Well, and we're blessed to have uh, great franchisees already. Our company is almost 40 years old. Uh, you know, that grew up here, started in the uh, in our hometown is Charlotte, and so we're very proud of that to say that. Our, here, but when you look for now franchisees that come in from the outside that don't know who we are, mm -hmm. uh, we are very, very uh, critical on that, and it's a, a long process that we put them through. And I'm the kind of the last process of that where they've gone through discovery days and all those things. And then, uh, be honest, I try to talk people out of it, just to be very honest, because running a restaurant is is hard. People think that you open the doors and you see the long lines and you make a lot of money. Well, the margins are small. And you've got to be willing to, you know, it's a tw not, we're not open 24 hours a day, but you've got to be willing uh, to do that. A lot of people got money. Many, many people got money that can invest. The time and effort that it takes to, to do that every day and to spend those 10, 12, 14 hour days, uh, we make sure they're very clear about that and that they're operators that they bring on board, that they have that or in place. And then our culture. Uh, we're not going to change things just to, uh, uh, to be the menu of the day or the menu of the month. We do what we do for a reason, and then we've been successful from that. And, um, you know, we're very particular before we let somebody join us. Yeah, go ahead, Joanne. Thank you for all that you did with the flood, and mm -hmm. thank you for the different types of philanthropy that you participate in. Bojangles, for a long time, has been a supporter of the Muscular Dystrophy Association yes, and the South Carolina Teacher Award. How does the management team make those decisions as to what nonprofits they're going to support? And how do you engage those so important franchisees? Well, you know, we get asked all the time, uh, no doubt about it, to, to do things. And we do as much as we possibly can. But the MDA has been important for a lot of years, over 15 years. I was actually with uh, Mr. McCall yesterday. Uh, he, we got to take myself and folks from the MDA through their labs here, uh, mm -hmm. which was a uh, a very nice uh, tour that they gave us. And Mr. Uh, McCall, uh, Hugh McCall. Hugh former, McCall, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, with the McCall Lockwood uh, Laboratories here with the limb girdle disease that they're, mm -hmm. that they're trying to cure, to cure. And so, you know, we have a golf tournament every year around that. We, we sell shamrocks. We send kids to the camps uh, for a week. Uh, and it's just that, that is a special one for us. Uh, the teachers, uh, the Teacher of the Year with Governor Haley has been a wonderful, wonderful event. Uh, that we get to send uh, the teacher of the year to uh, on a cruise. Uh, and then we also select another teacher that uh, didn't win, so the two of them get to go. But the books that we give back is a bigger part of it. We've given over you know, thousands and thousands of books back to the schools. It's not hard to get the franchisees involved in that, especially when it's going to help their local community. Because that's not just one part of South Carolina. It's all over South Carolina that we do that. And so we're very proud. Uh, even though we're in Charlotte, North Carolina, it's the Carolinas, and that's kind of how we look at that. You know, the Carol, you, you talk about that. Uh, Jim, Jim Morgan, former Krispy Kreme mm -hmm. chairman and CEO, sat in that chair, Clifton, and, and 
unapologetically talked about the the non-healthy nature of donuts. <laughs> um, and I've got to ask you, you know, in a in a in a in a world now where everything is health conscious or cage free or free roaming or or certainly low fat, mm -hmm. um, how do you not make apology about the nature of Bojangles? Well, you know, I I, I won't apologize for for good food, and uh, that's how I'll put that. You know, I think what does go. Uh, unnoticed with with Bojangles is that we do have healthy options whether it's roasted chicken or uh, rice or beans or, or those types of things but that being said that's not what we're known for uh, we're known for our, our freshly made biscuits that we make every 20 minutes uh, and could we make those biscuits cheaper uh, could we have them frozen and put them in an oven uh, out of the freezer sure we could uh, but our southern recipes people want to eat good food and you know, and I, I don't mean to make light of this, but a lot of people will go and order a pizza and then get a Diet Coke, okay? <laughs> um, you know, our food has is, is done, been done the same way for 40 years, and I'm not gonna, you know, Jim was perfectly right by saying that. We're not gonna apologize for food that people want, and it's good food. But then again, it's moderation and all the other things that takes place with that, but we do have healthy options. Uh, it's just, that's not what we're known yeah, for. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, and, and food quality and food safety has been in the news no uh, about it. recently. And I'm curious, for a company your size, how do you, quality control has to be an issue. How do you ensure that, safety and quality? Well, there's several things. We have third-party uh, firms that do what is called audits uh, that are inspections uh, three and four times a year, depending on where that may be. Uh, but then all of our operations, whether that's the FBCs, franchise business consultants on the franchise side, or our area directors, our directors of operations, RVP, our training, all of those types of things in the stores. And then of course, you've got the health departments and all the different things that come in, into play. But behind the scenes of that, you know, the quality control, whether that is something that's coming from a, a supplier, you need to know where, you know, from plow to plate, uh, basically, mm -hmm. where that's coming from. And that's a rigorous process uh, so that you can track those codes back to where things came from. So it's something that's uh, you know, you hate it when you hear things like this in our industry right now, and it can happen to anybody. Uh, but we do, we try as hard as we possibly can because the quality of our food, the food's our star. Yeah. You know, our people are our most important assets, but the food is the star of our brand, uh, and we're very protective of that. We have about a minute left, Joanne. Question. Okay. You have a lot of wonderful systems and processes in place, including the fact that you're philanthropic. What best advice? would you give to other organizations, other corporations who want to become philanthropic, who want to impart philanthropy? I would just say just get involved. Uh, you know, with the MDA, I'll speak to that uh, with those children and, uh, and getting to go to camp. You know, take the time, uh, first of all, to, to find what fits that company. Uh, don't try to be all things to all people, but find one and then go and, and be after it. I mean, for a company of our size, to be in the top 10 of all companies in the United States to give the MDA is a big deal for us. And we're very, very proud of that. And it's something that, not just I, but that's all the way down to our store levels. And once you get behind something like that, then put your time, your energy, and no doubt about your money into it, but you will get more back, I promise you, uh, than what you give. We, we literally have about a minute left. Um, d where are we going to see more Bojangles? With this idea of sure. growth that you have, is it going to be urban, suburban, or rural? All. Uh, you know, as you look at that, is, and again, the Carolinas are filling out, but we still have plenty of places of white space, even in, in North Carolina, even in Charlotte. There's some areas, especially where I live on the southern part of the city, we need to, to get some out there. But what you're going to see for the next couple of years, uh, you know, if you break it down to a percentage, 60%, let's say, will be outside of the Carolinas. We're in 11 states now, uh, but the, the growth will be in Tennessee uh, this year mm -hmm. uh, and also in, uh, in Georgia. Uh, but we're going into West Virginia. Uh, we just went into Kentucky. Um, so you'll see us grow, mm -hmm. but you're not going to see us jump states. It'll be that contiguous effect that will grow from the out where we call it yeah. core and adjacent markets. So but those uh, adjacents become core. Yeah, I'm sorry, Clifton. Thank, thank you for being on the program. Any, any truth to the rumor of that, like Amazon, you're not going to be airdropping uh, uh, biscuits <laughs> and drones? Or not, any, not, any delivery? Yeah. Yeah, that's in our research and development. Okay. We may have a <laughs> yeah, but no, okay. not, no time soon. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Clifton. Good luck going forward. Joanne, thank uh, thanks for being here. Welcome. Thank you. Good to have you.
Peter, welcome to North Carolina. Thank you. Great to Good be to here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Until next week, I'm Chris William. Good night. Major funding for Carolina Business Review was provided by the Duke Endowment, a private foundation enriching communities in the Carolinas through higher education, health care, rural churches, and children's services. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Who's responsible for rising health care costs? Join us and many others in a candid discussion at letstalkcost.com. Grant Thornton, operating in more than 100 countries, our tax audit and advisory professionals specialize in helping companies unlock their growth potential. Novant Health, bringing you world-class technology, clinicians, and care when and where you need it. Sunoco, a global manufacturer of consumer and industrial packaging products and provider of packaging services with more than 300 operations in 35 countries. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of South Carolina, where healthcare is changing for the better. Find out how at ahealthysc.tv and by viewers like you. Thank you. Promotional consideration provided by Business North Carolina Magazine. For more information, visit carolinabusinessreview.org.